Afternoon conference. Afternoon conference. Afternoon. <laughs> We're going to do a pantomime instead today, I think. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Uh, this year is another record-breaking conference. There are more of you than ever before. So um, I'm welcoming even more of you than I usually do. So it is lovely to see each and every single one of you. Now, some of you will know that over the last couple of years, we've been mixing things up a little bit at the PLSA. Uh, we've changed our policy structure. Uh, we've changed our corporate governance structure. We've changed a number of the internal structures with the team. We've moved offices and lots of the faces have changed. And much of that change has been designed to make the PLSA fit for the future. So we're not afraid to break convention, to break tradition. And today, you're privy, you're present. Uh, we're gonna break another long-standing tradition. So normally it's the chair of the association who gives the opening remarks. Um, but this year we're gonna break that tradition and our chief executive, Julian Mund, is gonna give those opening remarks. Now, over the last couple of years, Julian has met an awful lot of you um, on a one-to-one -one basis or in small groups, but this is the first time he stood on a stage and spoken to a whole bunch of you, a record-breaking bunch of you, all at the same time. So all I've got to do is introduce him to you, or to, to those of you who don't already know him. So, uh, conference, meet Julian. Hello. Julian, meet conference. Very kind to get a round of applause at the start. And um, always nice to be here to break traditions. Thank you, Richard. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming here to Manchester. And as Richard said, a record-breaking conference here at Manchester. I'd also like to take a little bit of time before I get going just to thank the PLSA team, the award-winning PLSA team. As of last Friday, they won an award for putting on great conferences like this one. So um, thank you to my team for doing that. An event like this takes absolutely bucket loads of planning. There are so many things that we have to do and that we have to get right. Huge number of things, huge number of people. And it's thanks to my team and all the hard work that they put in that they get the event right for all of us here today. So thank you, team. Fair enough. Yeah. The PLSA annual conference is big. But remarkably, there's one event that's slightly bigger, and it pains me to say that. About six weeks ago, the Rolling Stones finished their 48th tour at the Hard Rock Bowl in Miami. And that was sponsored by the Alliance for Lifetime Income. They're a US trade association that promote the sale of annuities. And their mission is to help Americans address the risk of outliving their retirement income so that they can enjoy their retirement. And when the fans were arriving at the Stones concerts, they were greeted by an Alliance for Lifetime Income tour bus, offering them the chance to talk about annuities. Doesn't sound very rock and roll though, does it? The New York Times said, the bad boys of the 60s and 70s are starting to show their age. But frankly, I think it's really clever advertising by the Alliance Jagger is 76, and his band's fan base are in their 40s through to their 70s. That's us. <laughs> it's changing. But it's also advertising that points at a genuine problem. In June, a World Economic Forum report estimated that men's life expectancy in the US outstripped their retirement savings by just over eight years. And for women, that's by almost 11 years. If we take a look at the UK, it's worse. 10 years for men and almost 13 years for women. And in Japan, 15 years for men and almost 20 years for women. And that's the world's three biggest funded pension systems. The report also said that the size of the world's collective retirement savings gap could exceed $400 trillion by 2050. But people are definitely saving. Again, if we take a look at the UK, there were around 46 million pension scheme members last year, and that was up from around 41 million the year before. And over 17 million of those are active pension savers. 
and also in the UK, thanks to automatic enrolment, DC memberships have increased by nearly 30%. But people aren't saving enough. The UK's share of that $400 trillion gap in 2050 is $33 trillion, or around £29 trillion. Pounds. And sadly, people don't have a good understanding of the decisions they could or should take, either in saving or when it comes to using their savings. And they're not as supported enough with the guidance and products that they need at retirement. And these are among some of the key issues identified by the PLSA's policy board when it assessed the pensions landscape. And our policy board set four key objectives for our work. Achieving well-run schemes, encouraging effective engagement, promoting adequate contributions, and addressing the challenges of scale and consolidation. You can add to that list. Schemes are not always well governed. DB schemes are hard to afford and have usually been in deficit for a decade. Trust and confidence in pension savings is low. And regulation is too complex. We have a big financial hole and big challenges to overcome. The PLSA has a collective mission to help everyone achieve a better income in retirement. And we do this by bringing people together. The PLSA brings together everyone involved in pensions to raise the bar for our industry. We bring together well over 3,000 people at conferences like this one every year to make new connections and share new ideas. Our drinks receptions, morning runs, open PLSA sessions, long refreshment breaks, all mean that you can meet like-minded people, hopefully, in the way that you want to. We bring together thought leadership, insight and analysis to keep you informed, up to date and ready to act. And we do that with things like our top 10 Brexit tips, ESG guidance, talent management work that we do for our local authority members, and of course our member magazine, Viewpoint. And we can help you gain the skills and knowledge that you need to succeed in your day job through our independent and expert training, which can help you be a better trustee, and our Made Simple guides, developing your understanding of topical issues and new trends, hopefully without the sales pitch. This is our core member offering, our foundation, something that we have to maintain and strengthen by improving our events, improving the way we communicate, and by improving the way that we listen to you so that we can give you a better quality service. And as a membership body, a body of members, we set out to influence the pension system. We bring together our members with government and with regulators so that they can talk to each other, challenge each other, question each other, and find solutions to the big policy issues. In June this year, eight PLSA members joined us in speaking to the House of Commons Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy Committee about matters of investment, stewardship and corporate governance. And our work on voting guidelines, ESG and workforce reporting show how active we are in those areas. And alongside this, we have the work that we do on the Cost Transparency Initiative, which can help you identify and compare the costs of fund management so that you can run your schemes more efficiently. And of course, there's PQM, the Pension Quality Mark, which is now 10 years old. This continues to champion good quality and high value pensions with updated standards that keep pace with today's challenges. We bring together the people whose day job it is to put policy into practice through our policy board, its committees and our reference groups. And two years ago, here in Manchester, when Richard became chair of the PLSA, he said he wanted us to be a more open PLSA and to bring more PLSA members into our policy work. And today, we now have around 400 of our members involved in those bodies. 400 contributing time, experience and intelligence. 
400 making sure that our policy reflects what's really going on in schemes and 400 helping us to find solutions that work. But of course, our policy work is open to input from any of our members. Put simply, we do not exist without the expertise and the input of our membership. And you can talk to the PLSA team here at this event and give us your views directly. And we come to see you, where you are, and hear about what matters most to you in your day job. Patient capital investing, GMP equalisation, recruitment, or the annual allowance. That's how we combine your expertise to influence the pension system, so that together we can fulfil our mission. This is how we built our policy programme around our policy themes. Raising the bar with adequate contributions, because a better income in retirement depends on making sure enough money goes into pensions and lifetime savings. Raising standards with well-run schemes. Because good governance goes to the heart of trust in the industry and the delivery of good outcomes for savers. Driving clarity with effective engagement so savers have the understanding and the confidence to make the right decisions. And building value with the right approach to scale and consolidation. So we build value across all schemes. Those are the rallying cries for PLSA members. We get behind those goals as the basis of our engagement with all of you and across our industry. We lobby government to try and fulfil those aims and we coordinate the industry, the government and regulators to implement new regulations and initiatives in a way that fulfils them. Just like our core member offering, we have to maintain and strengthen this too to be even more proactive in bringing the industry together and to play an increasingly influential public role as the voice of pensions and a voice that shouts about the value of pensions, a role as the captain of the pensions industry. And that's how we focus our efforts on the outside. And on the inside, to support that work, we have to be financially secure, ready to adapt our offering and form partnerships that are going to add value. We have to have a team full of ambitious and high-performing people and make sure that the PLSA is a great place to work. And we have to put that member power, those policy priorities and a strong organisation behind us into shaping the pensions agenda. And for me, it's time for the PLSA to lead the industry in meeting the policy challenges that I've talked about, to fill that gap in the way we save and the way we value saving. First, it's time to secure our saving. Our huge and complex pension system has to be truly world class. And we have to unite to support the future people want with high quality schemes that operate at low cost and provide value for money. The CTI is doing that and so will our proposals for an industry wide approach to assessing value for money. They'll build on approaches already used in the pension sector and influence the thinking of the TPR and FCA as they look in this issue in more depth early next year. But it also means automatic contributions have to increase. They have to increase from 8% to 12% so people start saving more. And it means we're going to need a strong funding re regime for defined benefits funds with a regulator that's powerful enough to maintain it and new models like super funds to help employers to manage their promises and to help scheme members to get their pensions. And on top of that, master trusts need supervision that supports their effectiveness. And the LGPS has to be empowered through good governance. Second, it's time to picture your future. And tomorrow morning, finally, we'll get to tell you all about the pioneering retirement living standards. For the first time, savers will be able to understand what their retirement lifestyle could cost and what their savings could buy them. Telling people about what their lifestyle could be, not just giving them numbers and amounts, will increase their confidence and get them engaged in picturing the future they could really have. By providing simple rules of thumb, 
They'll start a conversation about what people want from their retirement and how they can make sure that they get it. And third, it's time to talk about spending. More people are saving and we want them to save more. But one day, all this new money in the pension system will be being spent and people have more responsibility, more complex choices to make and more risks to manage. And we need to be ready to put as much energy into helping them manage their spending as we put into helping them secure their savings. We have to focus on improving outcomes for savers as they convert their pension pots into income. We have to work to develop an architecture for helping them understand their objectives, make difficult choices, and find guidance and access the right products. And as we set out last year in our Hitting the Target report, we have to minimise the need for in-depth understanding and active engagement by creating products that will meet the needs of scheme members. And it's important to me that we make our agenda clear and keep making it clear and to make our work and the su successes that we achieve on your behalf as visible as possible. I want our members, our partners and the people that we go out to influence to know who we are and what we stand for. We are the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association, the voice of the pensions industry, a guiding light to our members. We exist to help everyone achieve a better income in retirement, to bring our industry together in securing the financial future of millions of savers and our nation's economy. We are the policy driving Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association. That means building the understanding of savers through effective engagement. It means setting new standards through well-run schemes. It's about a sustainable future for savers and businesses through adequate contributions. And it's our focus on creating value for savers and schemes alike through scale and quality. We are the member backing Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association, giving them the support they need to run better pension schemes, equipping them with the latest thought leadership alongside hosting the industry's biggest and most connected events. We're their voice in Westminster and Whitehall, ensuring they're heard by government, parliament and regulators. We are the change-making Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association. We've made it easier for trustees to compare scheme costs and given employers a new mark to celebrate the quality of their pension schemes. Our retirement living standards will help savers better understand the true cost of living in retirement and our contributions to the pensions dashboard will make tracking a pension online as easy as a current account. We are the future-facing Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association. We believe in the power of our industry to build a truly world-class pension system. We believe everyone will enjoy a better income in retirement as a result of the work that we do together. We are the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association. We are the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association and we do love a good video sting. <laughs> Today, I've told you about three things. Our role as a membership body, backing you in your role and in your schemes with information, support and events. Our role as a captain of our industry, influencing the way that things work so that they work for you. And I've told you about the things we need to do together as an association and its membership to start pioneering change in our industry. And I've told you about those things because you've told me about them. Over the summer, we carried out a wave of member research to find out what you value about the PLSA, where we can improve and what we should be focusing on in the future. And today I've talked about the things you said you value most as members, the updates, insight and analysis. I've talked about the policy work that we do for you, covering the issues that you tell us matter most, DB risk, Brexit, the role of trustees, the unique challenges facing local authorities, investment risk, member engagement, and ever-changing regulation. 
And I've talked about the PLSA and the leadership and thought leadership role that you want from us. Fighting through the noise and setting a clear vision for the future. And of course, I've said all this to you at our biggest event of the year, the PLSA Annual Conference. This event has been running since 1934. <laughs> oh dear. No. No. Nine years after we were founded, and nine years before Mick Jagger was born. <laughs> the long running history of this event really shows the value of bringing people together. That's what we do. This week, we're here to talk about how to build a world class pension system. And I'm confident that we've given you a world-class conference as the forum for that debate. And at this event, and in every interaction you have with us afterwards, I want you to see that we're striving to build a world-class pensions and lifetime savings association. Thank you. <laughs>